Fire away. Come on, somebody be brave. So tell us about your program. Okay, so program, first of all, I am a firm believer that uh, all success is habits and mindsets, right? You practice the right habits with the right mindsets, there's nothing that you can't do because there's been no limitations. All the limitations exist here. It doesn't matter if you don't have access to resources. If you have unlimited uh, resourcefulness, then you'll find a way around that, right? Uh, so the program is designed to help the entrepreneur, first of all, reclaim their freedom. What I've discovered is that most entrepreneurs, most business people, spend about one and a half days of real, true, productive time in a given week. And they're wasting the balance. And so I've developed a process for helping them see that that's what's happened, for helping them understand how to leverage that knowledge, and use that balance in a more effective way, which automatically causes them to begin to grow, personally. Then we take the program and we introduce it into the organization, if they have a team, so that they can get that balance used in a more effective way. Notice they didn't say efficient, effective way with their team, which then causes more growth, right? So it accelerates or multiplies progress, achievement, and growth. So, uh, uh, what I found is three things. Number one, they've lost their freedom and they need it back. Number two, they've lost their effectiveness because they're all tangled up in the weeds. Instead of using their unique genius, the balance of the day or the balance of the week, they're doing a lot of stuff that they shouldn't be doing, and so they're kind of grinding their way through the day or through the week, right? Uh, they don't delegate very well, a lot of them. And so that's a real problem that prevents them from really growing a good team. So the third workshop is all about them doing the same thing for the team. How do you build a team of people who are using their unique genius in a leveraged way that is synergistic with what you're doing so that this dynamic growth occurs, so that it becomes not linear, you know, little by little, but exponential. And, and then the final piece is most people use a shotgun when they go into the marketplace, right? They're looking for whoever will fall in the mirror. And in the beginning stages of being an entrepreneur, most people have to go through that stage. The smart ones, the ones who, who get good advice, make a decision, hey, this is exactly who it is that I'm looking for. And then they create messaging, they create marketing, they create visuals, they create uh, collateral material that goes specifically after that person. So they polarize the marketplace. These people, aren't even attracted to you, but these people are because now you know exactly who your target market is. That is the key, really, to the 21st century 10x growth because what you've done now is you put yourself in a position where you can create transformations. So there's, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of businesses that do transactional business. It's very uh, competitive. There's a lot of price pressure, margins are very thin. You have to throw a lot of dollars at marketing but the companies who make the shift to let's create a transformation set themselves apart so far that they don't have to spend money on, on, on marketing. Uh, they don't have to compete for price. They can choose uh, the margins that they want to get according to the terms and conditions that they want to do business by. And the people that they're marketing to will wait in line to take advantage of it because what they've done is they've impacted the person in a way that causes them to go, wow, that was incredible. And so you, you just can't compete with that. Elon Musk is a good example, right? Have you ever seen a Tesla commercial? Not one dollar spent on Tesla marketing, not one dollar. Uh, because he creates this wow experience. People buy into his why. So, uh, next question. How do you identify lost entrepreneurs? I feel like most entrepreneurs feel that they're in control. It's true, yeah, you're right. A lot of them do feel like they're in control. Uh, networking, having conversations, working out, uh, you know, introduces me to new ones, and then I just ask a few questions. That becomes pretty evident, both to them and to me, that they're struggling. So, next. So how long is this program? So I'm struggling, and we've identified me. So, <laughs> what's <laughs> <it>? <laughs> 
Uh, so it's one year. <coughs> yeah, it's one year, and it's four quarterly workshops. So the, the name of the program is Learn, Do, Grow 10X. So there's a lot of doing. Uh, what I'll do is introduce the growth concepts. Expand. Is it one-on-one workshop? Oh, no, it would be in a group with other entrepreneurs, not unlike what we have going on here. So we would, we would then explore the concepts, the theories, the insights, the innovation, the innovative way of looking at how you're using time in the first workshop, and is there a more uh, exponential way you could use time. Uh, there's a lot of thinking tools that I've developed to help the entrepreneurs sort of work through that in a very practical, simple, elegant way. And uh, both, uh, all four of the workshops are two days apiece. So, and then in between, there's gap coaching and, and focused uh, calls. So, any kind of coaching or personal development, even professional development, doesn't happen in a seminar or a single workshop. It, it's incremental. Unfortunately, that can't be made exponential in most cases. Uh, the results could be exponential, but the progress needs to be incremental. So it's over time the change occurs. Does that make sense? Yeah. I have two questions. Yeah. What does the program cost, and what's your success rate? The program costs six grand a year. Okay. okay. And the success rate is 100% uh, so far. We just launched in June. So, so do you determine success by if they grow 10 times, or how do you structure that? Yeah, that's up to the individual entrepreneur. But what we do is establish a baseline in the beginning, and then we put metrics in place to measure, and establish some type of milestones that they want to reach. And then we're pushing, pushing, pushing for them to, to get there. Because what you measure grows. What you don't measure doesn't grow. So yes? Uh, is it just in Hampton Roads? Um, Part, second part of that question then is it scalable that if it was moved to other major cities that you. others you could train other people to do the same program that is my long-term vision so I mentioned to you something about and, and, and currently yes it is in Hampton Roads I live here so I'm the best place for me to start it but I want to go into some of the other major cities in the country and I even have some coaching relationships across the pond so I'd like to take it over there at some point. I mentioned to you that a lot of people's future looks like this. Right? Instead of looking like this, it looks like this. I'm 55, so I'm not a spring chicken. And yet I have this 30-year plan for my business. And if you can't tell by the tone of my voice and the inflection of what I'm talking, I'm very passionate about it. I really, really, really enjoy what I do. And I think it's a travesty for someone to decide that they turn that off at some point because the rest of society says uh, at age 65 you retire. That's That just doesn't make sense to me. So I am very disruptive and innovative in my own thinking in an attempt to keep myself young and rejuvenated all the time. I read 50 books a year. I listen to, I don't know, probably tens of thousands of hours worth of audio content. And, from some of the <laughs> brightest. <laughs> yeah, so I listen to tens of thousands of hours of audio content from some of the brightest minds on the planet in an attempt to keep myself young and rejuvenated and on fire about what it is that I do and about entrepreneurs because I have this belief that entrepreneurs are the solution to all the problems that the world faces. Not politics, not politicians, not some government program, but us. We, the entrepreneurs, we're the solution to all the problems. And because I'm in that environment and I'm studying it and I'm researching it and I'm curating it and I'm indexing it, I'm seeing that that's true. There's some entrepreneurs around the world who are doing some truly remarkable things. I really believe that in our lifetime, lifetimes, we're gonna eliminate, uh, you know, there's one billion people on the planet who don't have access to fresh water. We're gonna eliminate that problem in our lifetime. Uh, if you're following Peter Diamandis and Stephen Kotler, who familiar with the name? I've heard the name. Yeah, so they're talking about the 60s of digi digitization, where when something that was matter, like you know, the fax machine that's now inside of my phone, or the camera 
that's now inside of my phone, or you know, I can name a hundred, a thousand things that are now on my phone that once were, you know, they sat on a desk or whatever. Once they become digitized, they enter into this exponential uh, curve. First, they go deceptive; they disappear because they're gaining strength. They're figuring out how to shrink cost, and so all of that happens beneath our awareness. But eventually, it comes out of that stage. And it immediately goes into this hockey stick level of growth where it democratizes and demonetizes and makes it possible for all of us to take advantage of it. Think back you know, 20 years ago, how many people had a cell phone? Not very many. It was a luxury item that only the wealthy could afford. Now, almost everybody has one. And not only do they have the cell phone, it's a smartphone with millions, perhaps billions of dollars worth of previously unavailable technology to all of you here in the, in the palm of my hand. And so this, uh, this uh, for lack of a better word, this industry that they're, those folks are in uh, it, it is impacting all industries. It's impacting heating and air. It's impacting the financial markets. It's impacting healthcare. Pretty soon, the way we see and view those markets is going to completely transform. What was is no longer going to be because they're figuring out ways to digitize it. That could be scary, or it could be, you know what, it's coming. Let me find ways to be a part of that. Let me adjust my mindset and not have a scarce mindset or a fixed mindset. Let me have a growth mindset, an abundant mindset, and put myself into that space and learn what's happening so that I'm ready. I'm ready to pivot. I'm ready to transition, I'm ready to ramp up, whatever, when it happens. Because it's going to come, it's going to happen. A big part of my program is helping people understand how much more potential they have. Because man, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, so your potential never is reached. We don't rise to the level of our potential, we fall to the level, or stall at the level of our thinking. Make sense? So, in trying to finalize the answer to your question, uh, yes, I'd love to scale it. I want to, I want to package it up. I want to train other coaches. I want to introduce it to other markets. There's some other people out there that are already doing it in, in very cool ways. I'm just doing it in my unique way. Uh, any other questions? So, how often do you start your these? Well, I would say I just got rolling, so my plan is to run as many classes as I can. And I think based on the math that I've done, I can probably myself manage about three classes a year. That still gives me time to read, to develop new concepts, to put together a program for the second year, uh, and the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year. Because I'd like to bring them in, get them the kind of results they're looking for, and keep them with me indefinitely. Is there a cap of the In the class. Well, I mean, in my mind, the way I look at it currently, I can envision you know a room like this being filled with entrepreneurs, uh, and and giving them a truly transformational experience with a small staff of three or four people. So you need because you need the staff to coach them and beyond. So Not necessarily to do the coaching, yes, to aid you know look over their shoulder, answer questions, but also to create an experience that's very very unique. Not available in the normal marketplace. I want people when they come, I want these entrepreneurs when they come in to truly feel like they can't get this any other place. So we're talking about which is the model that you said you want them to be, to be wild. Yeah. To make their product. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I've got to do some things that are truly unique in order to achieve that outcome. You had a question? Two questions. Is it just the four workshops? Is there follow-up in between the workshops? Or you know, you're, you're here and then you're on your own for another two and a half months and then you'll see it in three months? Or... That's a great question. So yeah, I will follow it up with, for those who need it. Not everybody's going to. I've had some clients who have to have their hand held for a long period of time before they feel strong enough to, to stand on their own computer. And then others who just say, you know what, I got it, man. Let me, 
So yeah, I'll, I'll do uh, some gap coaching, so week to week if they need it. Uh, we'll definitely do reporting once a week because we want to see that everybody who's participating is actually the, doing the doing part because that's where the growth is, not the learning, but in the doing. And then we'll do a, a monthly focus call. So we get everybody on the call who can make it and make sure they're pointed towards their, their goal. Anyone else? Who, who do you see as your main competition? I, I really don't. I, don't. I know there's a lot of people out there doing things for entrepreneurs. So I don't really see it as that I have any competition. I think, you know, anybody's the competition I am. I just got to get out of my own way. My, my, I'll tell you, my biggest challenge is uh, broadcasting what I know. So I need to be more diligent in using YouTube and Facebook and podcasting or audio content to broadcast what I know. And, uh, I mean, have you considered doing a, you know, putting it online and, and charging that way versus having to do face to face? Or is there, yeah, is there, I'm or is there more benefit in, in doing it face to face that, that makes it not doable? Believe it or not, I've, I've got a tremendous amount of understanding about that whole world. Some of the people that I follow now turning what I know into something digital. And I, uh, I do have a few products in the works. I created a program for entrepreneurs called Entrepid 90. So a lot of entrepreneurs, once they become an entrepreneur, neglect the most important thing they have, and that's their health. And so a lot of them are very sedentary. They sit on their butt all day. And that's really, really bad for you. So I created a little program that uh, helps break that cycle. It's called Entrepid 90. And basically every 90 minutes you get up and you do some squats, you do some push-ups, you do a few sit-ups, you do a plank where you're you know, pulling your core, and then you drink eight ounces of water. You go right back to work and I've recorded it. It takes about four or five minutes to go through the routine. And if you'll do that, you know, four, five, six times every day, you'll be amazed at how healthy you'll become. And then I'm a Bulletproof coffee, Bulletproof, uh, familiar with the brand, Bulletproof, all things Bulletproof. So I'm an affiliate for them and love their products and we'll introduce those when the timing is right to someone who's ready to help them uh, get better cognitive function, and better nutrition feeding their body so that that aspect of their uh, unique genius is heightened as much as possible. $6,000 is a lot of money, so how do you fill that room? I mean, obviously, I think you're going to need a lower tier of pricing to bring people in, funnel them into that $6,000 program. Yeah. So. Yeah, so uh, I mentioned earlier that the marketplace, uh, a lot of people who do shotgun blast in the marketplace, so I'm really looking for entrepreneurs who have been in business for a while. It's obvious that they're they're not growing like they want to grow. They're kind of wrapped around the axle, maybe grinding through the day, through the week. Uh, haven't had any real luck putting together a dynamic team. And so, and or they have had a lot of success, and now they've just grown weary of what they're doing. And they're making about 100000 a year, and uh, so they can, they can afford to jump the program. Which I, I realize does limit my well, you know, you know, reach. So. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I mean, you have a web, so if we want to get more information, see what you do with the uh, website, yeah. is there a website that you provide? Yes, uh, LDG 10X, so the program's called Learn Do Grow 10X. One other, one other thing that I'm working towards, and, and it's only a concept now in our mind, is a clean thinking lab. So uh, the term clean thinking came to me as a result of my love for what Steve Jobs has done. One of his most famous quotes is, it takes a lot of work to get your thinking clean, but when you do, everything changes. And I know as a result of escaping all of the, the past that has held me back, cleaning up my thinking concerning all of that, how, 
how powerful, truly powerful that really is. I, you know, not too many people can talk about the death of their five-year-old son without tearing up about it, without still grieving about it. And I'm free from that. Uh, I can talk about the death of my son and recall all the wonderful experiences that I had with him without getting trapped in that, right? And it's, it's possible for everybody to achieve that if they'll make the decision to pursue it with anything that happens to you. Yes? There seems to be a spiritual element to your teaching. Does it come through in your coaching? I think so, naturally, yes. Uh, I absolutely believe that we're spiritual beings that... Have a human experience. Yeah, have a human experience. I, I believe in God or the universe or something much bigger than us that's helping us figure all this out. Uh, I believe in love. Uh, I think love is very underrated. I think we don't talk about it enough in business uh, because I think that love has lost its meaning, right? There's so many iterations of what love is represented as, but I think true love is, is this. It's when you're in a relationship with someone, you're not attempting to control them in any way. They're free to come and go. They have the liberty to, to flourish, to be themselves. What it often looks like is this. You know, how dare you not put your dirty clothes in the clothes hammer? And why did you put the toilet paper on the roll upside down again? How many times do I got to? Now that matters. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens though when you think about it, the truth is, is that creates a wedge in the relationship. Instead of people coming together, locking arms and saying, come on, let's do this. They, and over time, to a lot of entrepreneurs. I mean, the divorce rate with entrepreneurs is astronomical. So, yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, it comes to yes. So, as we near the end here, what can a one million cups do for you? I got asked that question when I was in Williamsburg. I think uh, you've already done it, really. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to do. You know, you gave me an You're opportunity to talk. I got to meet some cool people. You, you agreed to let me come back when the room's full. So, uh, I, if you run into somebody that meets my criteria for a good client, and by meeting the criteria.